welcome to Unsung. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. In this episode, we're coming to you from the beautiful Mount Washington, taking in the view and catching some rays. We hope you enjoyed our start to our series of veterans featuring soldiers and sailors. If you've not had a chance to check it out, check out our Unsung Uncut series over on pittsburghonvideo.org. You'll want to give it a look. There's a special uncut on a Civil War hat in the museum's collection that has a very interesting story behind it. We also remind you to celebrate Memorial Day with free admission to the museum and a picnic on the front lawn. In this episode, we take a quick break from the veteran series to celebrate graduation, as we will hear from very special students at the DePaul School. And we have a commencement speech for you as well. To all the graduates out there, Unsung says congratulations. We look forward to seeing you make our community better. Now get to work. Time for me to get to work as well with the latest news from our area nonprofits. Bricolage is excited to announce the details of Wordplay, a collaboration with local comedy writer and performer Alan Olofsson. Wordplay is an exciting new event that blends hilarious true stories with a live music mashup. Actors, comedy writers, and everyday people read their own funny and often poignant true stories with a live DJ score. Using anything from Bach to Britney Spears, the producer works with each performer to develop the perfect soundtrack, creating a rich storytelling experience unlike anything out there today. The result will be something distinct, collaborative, lively, and most importantly, totally funny. On Friday, May 31st, the first installment of this quarterly series debuts with storytellers David Harris Gershon, Nora McLaughlin, Alan Olofsson, Amanda Hamilton Roos, and Todd Schaefer, with live music provided by DJ Firefly. The show begins at 8 p.m. and tickets are just $15 at the address on your screen. Let's send it out to Shadyside, home to the DePaul School, and thank them for hosting the Unsung Team. And also, showing us how you can speak miracles. The mission of DePaul School is to teach each child who is deaf or hard of hearing how to listen, speak, and learn. Most children, even the most profoundly deaf children, have the potential to learn listening and spoken language, and many people still don't know that. With the technology today, cochlear implants and digital hearing aids, these children now have access to all the speech sounds. So with early detection, appropriate amplification, and an early intervention program that focuses on listening skills, many of these children can develop speech and language just like their typical hearing peers. Um, actually, it was going to be my last choice because I, I heard about it, they, you know, kids were talking and I was like, well, Chloe didn't say any words, but when I walked through the door, something just made me feel like this was home and I was like, this is where Chloe's going to be. And I just knew it when I walked in the door. Well, from the get-go, my husband and I knew we wanted a listening and spoken language outcome for Morgan. We wanted him to have the same opportunity as any other hearing child would have. So that's why we chose this school, because that's what they do here. Um, for our family, it was listen and spoken language because um, we wanted to be able to communicate with Liam. And we wanted him to be able to hear and to be able to speak. It was really amazing to see in what amounts to a very, very short period of time, relatively speaking, uh, his development to be able to speak in sentences, to be able to use grammar. His, his vocabulary that he understands is just remarkable after having amplification for a little bit more than a year and a half. So what he's hearing and understanding is tremendous. What he's able to speak and say is also is growing by leaps and bounds. Started talking, at, you know, um, right around, I think he was 14 months old. So very similar to what a typical hearing child would be. And it was, you know, I strongly believe based on the early intervention. So he found his voice here. It just, just her confidence level and the fact that she can get along with many of the students and she loves the staff. So it means so much to her and I, DePaul being here. Uh, the use of cochlear implants in children has been approved since 1990 by the FDA. We've been educating children at DePaul since 1988. Uh, this is um, the externally worn speech processor and then the internally uh, surgically implanted device that um, sends the information across the skull to the internally uh, implanted device. Uh, sound is picked up by the microphones 
digitally coded and the signal then sent through radio frequency across the skin and scalp um, couples with the internal antenna uh, through a magnet and then this is essentially a computer uh, that captures the sounds, namely speech, from the outside world and brings them to the inside of the head into the inner ear and uh, to uh, tiny electrode or metal bands that are implanted in the inner ear, uh, which take the place of the missing and damaged hair cells that are the most common cause of pediatric hearing loss. Uh, at DePaul School, we monitor the children's hearing losses over time, also how they understand speech uh, through both their hearing aids and their cochlear implants. You know, I, one of the things I thought he would never be able to do is to sing a song, you know, that he would never hear those things. <laughs> and he sings all the time. Hey, diddle, diddle. <laughs> and I say that's because of his experiences here. I think the first time that we heard him put together like a five or six word sentence was a really amazing time because, you know, you could point to an object and he could associate, you know, verbal sounds with an object. That's one thing. But when he's gaining the mastery of a language where he can contextualize words, both subject and verb, adding Keller um, or other adjectives, uh, it was really when we started to realize that it was kind of all coming together. Two-thirds of our population are kindergarten age or younger. That's because many of the children who move through our toddler and preschool programs have developed the communication skills and are ready to move back into their regular education setting. Well, I think the biggest opportunity that he will have is that he's on the path to mainstream to our neighborhood school for kindergarten. That's the ultimate goal. So that's probably one of the biggest opportunities that he'll have. We know that he's on his way. His teacher, Miss Jessica, is so has been so encouraging lately. And she keeps saying to him, oh, big thumbs up, Liam, big thumbs up. So every time he comes home now, like if he does something good, he'll be like, big thumbs up, mom, big thumbs up. And it's just, it's so heartwarming to hear your child say those things. You know, when Chloe started, she was three. She was uh, just implanted, uh, and it was six weeks near her birthday. She started here and um, barely said any words at all. Now she can read chapter books. She does math problems. She um, carries on conversations with her sisters, her family, her friends. She even takes dance and um, believe she does very well at dance. I just don't think that people realize how... Um, how amazing life can be for a child that's born deaf now that that truly um, if they get their implants if they if they attend a school for listening and spoken skills they really can do the same thing as any other hearing child and it it's it's something that I could have never imagined before and it, it's really a miracle graduates my advice to you is know when to break the rules we're breaking our own rules today. The following video is not from Pittsburgh, but it is making its way around Facebook. We think the message is one that is relevant to our community, and we hope it inspires you. Again, please don't think I'm giving you moral advice, or that I'm saying you're supposed to think this way, or that anyone expects you to just automatically do it, because it's hard. It takes will and effort. And if you are like me, some days you won't be able to do it, or you just flat out won't want to. But most days, if you're aware enough to give yourself a choice, you can choose to look differently at this fat, dead-eyed, over-made-up lady who just screamed at her kid in the checkout line. Maybe she's not usually like this. Maybe she's been up three straight nights holding the hand of her husband who's dying of bone cancer. Or maybe this very lady is the low-wage clerk at the motor vehicles department who just yesterday helped your spouse resolve a horrific, infuriating red tape problem through some small act of bureaucratic kindness. Of course, none of this is likely, but it's also not impossible. It just depends what you want to consider. If you're automatically sure that you know what reality is and who and what is really important, if you want to operate on your default setting, then you, like me, probably won't consider possibilities that aren't annoying and miserable. But if you really learn how to think, how to pay attention, then you will know you have other options. 
it will actually be within your power to experience a crowded, hot, slow, consumer hell type situation as not only meaningful, but sacred. On fire with the same force that lit the stars. Love, fellowship, the mystical oneness of all things deep down. Not that that mystical stuff's necessarily true. The only thing that's capital T true is that you get to decide how you're gonna try to see it. This, I submit, is the freedom of real education, of learning how to be well-adjusted. You get to consciously decide what has meaning and what doesn't. That is real freedom. That is being educated and understanding how to think. The alternative is unconsciousness, the default setting, the rat race, the constant gnawing sense of having had and lost some infinite thing. I know that this stuff probably doesn't sound fun and breezy or grandly inspirational the way a commencement speech is supposed to sound. What it is, as far as I can see, is the capital T truth with a whole lot of rhetorical niceties stripped away. You are, of course, free to think of it whatever you wish. But please don't just dismiss it as some finger-wagging Dr. Laura sermon. None of this stuff is really about morality or religion or dogma or big fancy questions of life after death. The capital T truth is about life before death. It is about the real value of a real education, which has almost nothing to do with knowledge and everything to do with simple awareness. Awareness of what is so real and essential, so hidden in plain sight all around us all the time, that we have to keep reminding ourselves over and over, this is water, this is water. Join the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts for its 64th annual fundraiser, a cocktail reception that will include access to the latest exhibit that the Center for the Arts has, Fiber Art International 2013. This exhibit is a global showcase that features top fiber artists from around the world. For more information, please visit pittsburgharts.org. Join some very funny people and RSG1 Foundation on June 8th, 2013 at the Boiler Room on Banksville Road for Comedy to Cure Cancer as they rally together to support local brain tumor and cancer patients who require medical supplies, treatments, and oncology consulting services. RSG1 is dedicated to advancing metabolic therapies that will improve the quality of life for brain tumor and cancer patients. Every $500 raised will provide funding to a local patient. General admission tickets are $25 when purchased in advance. You can get them online at Comedy to Cure Cancer .org. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsung PGH. As always, thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. And hey, a reminder, we're on iTunes, so when you can't watch the video version because you have to run out to the store, take the audio with you. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself here on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. Said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car. Any dude